Hello everyone and welcome to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. We're glad you're tuned in. We want to give a shout out to our friends at Southern Oregon PBS, KTVL, KDRV, and the Dove Network. Thank you for hosting us on your station. In the Medford School District, we have one shared vision and that we believe that all are learning and learning is for all. And what better place to do that than right here on Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Hi, I'm Katie Cutsforth and I teach kindergarten at Jacksonville Elementary. I'm so excited to be back with you. Now, one of the last times we were together, I told you about our alphabet and how some letters have a quick sound and some letters have a continuous sound. That means you can make the sound for a long time and the sound will stay the same. So I'm gonna read a target to you first and it's on the table. I can recognize and name all upper and lowercase letters of the alphabet. Now remember, it's okay to say capital. I'm going to show you a capital letter right here. So remember the last time I told you our alphabet's kind of funny. Some of our letters have quick sounds, which you say it really fast, and some of our letters have continuous sound. That means you can say the sound for a really long time and the sound will stay the same. Now, I have a teacher friend that let me borrow her alphabet cards, and I love that because they're a little bit different than the ones I showed you last time. Now, I did start with the letter A, but while I was getting ready for you today, I mixed them up, but I'm gonna mix them up a little bit more so the A is hiding. And when I mix up cards, this is what I like to say. Mix and a mix and a mix, 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 mix and a mix and a mix, mix, mix. Now, I'll get them back together again, and then we'll say what letter and what sound. Oh, the A is still in the front. How'd that happen? Hold on, boys and girls, while I hide that A. I didn't mix them up very well. Okay, here we go. This letter is P. The sound is P. This letter is I. The sound is I. You kind of smile a little bit when you say the sound. This letter is N. The sound is N. Your nose wrinkles when you say that. That's kind of fun. This letter is E. The sound is E. You kind of frown a little bit. E. This letter is Q. The sound is Q. And remember, I like to say cuckoo. This letter is R. The sound is R. This letter is T. The sound is T. And this letter is Z. The sound is Z. Whoops. Oh, there's that A. The sound is A. And this letter is S. The sound is S. This letter is U. The sound is A. This letter is F. The sound is F. And this letter is G. The sound is G. And this letter is O. The sound is AH. Look, your mouth kind of makes the letter O when you say AH. This letter is V. And the sound is V. That kind of tickles my lips a little bit. This letter is K. That's my letter for Katie. And the sound is k. This letter is m. And the sound is m. Mm. This letter is h. And the sound is ha. This letter is c. And the sound is k. This letter is l. And the sound is o. My tongue really wants to come out with that one. This letter is b. And the sound is this letter is W, and the sound is woo. And remember, I like to say woo hoo. And this letter is X, and the sound is X. This letter is Y, and the sound is yee. I like to say yee-haw. This letter is D, and the sound is doop. Oh, last one. This letter is J, and the sound is J. 
I hope you had fun reviewing our letters. Review is when you do something again to see if you learned something different. I hope you learned something different. That sure was fun. Thanks for letting me review those letters and sounds with you. Now remember, the word review is when you do something again to see if you learn something different. One of the last times I got to be with you, I also showed you sign language. I want to do that again with you. I hope that you've been practicing. So get your hands warmed up. I'm going to use my left hand so that you at home can use your right hand. Remember the letters out here and the sound is here, but we get to use both hands together when we do the action that goes with it. So here we go. Uh, uh, um. A, A, alligator. B, B, bear. C, K, cat. D, D, dog. E, E, elephant. F, F, fox. G, G, goat. H, happy, my favorite. I, I, insect. J, J, jump. K, K, kangaroo. L, L, lion. M, M, monkey. N, N, nose. O, A, octopus. P, P, piano. Q, Q, queen. R, R, rainbow. S, S, sunshine. T, T, turtle, U, A, uh, umbrella, V, V, volcano, W, wonderful world, X, X, x-ray, Y, yo, yo, Z, Z, zebra, I think you are wonderful. Thanks for practicing your sign language with me. Make sure you really practice happy. I'm happy to spend time with you today. I'm super excited to share a standard with you. What's so exciting is that it's something that we've already done together. But I'll look at the table and show you that standard. I can produce and expand complete sentences in shared language activities. Now you might remember when we started making a book about our favorite meals together, you know, we're starting to stay home a lot more and keeping our bodies safe and hearing weird words like quarantine. I'm sorry that you have to learn what that means. Makes me a little bit sad too. I miss some of my relatives that live far away. I have a favorite uncle. His name is Art and he lives really far away from me. He lives in Washington. Now he's been staying home too, but I wonder, I wonder if there's a way I could call him. I think there is. So boys and girls, it's super important right now to be safe and keep your bodies healthy. And part of keeping your bodies healthy is to sometimes stay away from some of your relatives. Now I have a very special relative He's my uncle. He's my very favorite uncle, but he lives far, far away from me. So I was trying to think of a way that I could see him, but still keep my body healthy. So my <laughs> uncle, Art, is on the computer with me. Say hi, Art. Oh, hi, kids. How are you? Oh, are you I hope you're all staying safe, like your teacher says. Oh, are you staying safe? Yes, we are. We're in our home and uh, we have lots of work to do we stay inside most of the time but i have been outside working in the garden i bet you might have tomatoes in your garden they're they're growing in the greenhouse window in the kitchen as we speak do you ever eat tomatoes for dinner well uh we're gonna buy our. Own, we're not gonna buy our own tomatoes. We're gonna have tomato sandwiches with bacon. Yum. We're gonna have tomato sandwiches with uh, ham. Perfect. And anything else we can think of, spaghetti sauce, <gasps> all of that. 
spaghetti Ooh. sauce. Let me yeah. show you. Let me show you a picture I have. I've been making okay. a book with the kids. Oh really? That Meat. Lasagna. Doesn't oh, that look good? Gosh. So you might not want lasagna for dinner, but tell me what would be your favorite dinner. Well, it's funny you should ask me about that because I've been thinking about that and I think my favorite meal of all time is what my mom used to make me on my birthday. Oh, tell me. It was fried chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, and corn on the cob. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, I'm going to write so, some of that it down. Was so delicious. So you liked corn on the cob, fried chicken, with gravy, you said? Mashed potatoes mashed and gravy. Mashed potatoes and gravy. I'm just writing some notes so I can show my, my listeners something they could try at home. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm so excited to see you on the computer, Uncle Art. Yeah, it's good to see you, Katie. I think of you often. I think of you, too. I hope you're staying healthy and safe, and I'll talk to you on the phone again soon. Okay. I love you. I love you, too. Bye, kids. Bye. Wasn't that so cool? My uncle lives so far away, but he was, like, right here in the room with me. I love that he told me what he's been doing and keeping safe and working in his garden. That made me really happy to know the things he's doing to be safe. And now I can do a shared writing activity. So remember when I showed you my meat lasagna box and how we can turn it into a book? The last time I showed you this, I wrote a sentence about me. I like lasagna and salad. Salad is my favorite. Now I'm going to take this page away because I learned some things about my Uncle Art when we were talking on the phone today. He told me when he was a little boy that his mom used to make his favorite dinner for his birthday. So I'm going to say, my Uncle Art. Man, I was happy to see him. My Uncle Art likes fried chicken. That sounds delicious. Mashed potatoes. Oh, yum, that sounds good. Mashed potatoes. That's going to be a long word. He likes gravy with his mashed potatoes. And there was one more thing he said he liked. Corn on the cob. Corn on the cob. I want to read it one more time to make sure I got all the words. My Uncle Art likes fried chicken, mashed potatoes with gravy, and corn on the cob. That's such a great story from my uncle. In this space up here, I can draw a picture of my uncle Art and his fried chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, corn on the cob. I can put my page with my uncle Art's page, then I can put the front cover back on. And when all of this is over and we can see our families again, you'll have a nice book of everyone's favorite recipes. You can ask your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters, your cousin, or maybe you have an uncle that lives far away. You should ask and see. Now I'm gonna show you a game that you can make with a paper plate. I'm gonna move my cards aside. I'm gonna move my apple and my banana aside because I want to have just enough room to show you. So here's the things that you'll need. Some cards, if you have them. 
some clippies or a safety pin or a bobby pin. That's what I use in my hair. And I have a pen and I have a Sharpie. So if you're going to use a Sharpie, make sure you have a grown-up help you. And then I just have a regular paper plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to draw a line across the middle of my paper plate. And if you want, you can get a grown-up to help you with this. I'm going to try my hardest. Oh, okay. Then I'm going to do another one just like that. Pretty soon your paper plate's going to look like a pie. Oh, look at that. I'm going to do it again. That apples and bananas song is going through my head. Huh, look, I have room for one more. Now it kind of looks like a snowflake. Oh, here's the best part, my listeners. This part right here, this middle, that's what you're going to use for your spinner. So I'm thinking about those vowels again in my head. I know that there was an A and an E and an I and an O and a U. And that's exactly what I'm going to write on my plate. So I'll write an A and an E and an I and an O. I like the letter O because you can't write it backward. Then I'm going to write a U. Oh my gosh, I have some room left. I'm going to keep going. A E, I. Okay, friends, here's where it gets super fun. I'm going to put my Sharpie away because I don't want it to dry up. I put the lid on it and put it away so it will dry up. You get to decide what you use for your spinner. You can use a clippy like this. I like to use a safety pin because the closed part is kind of heavy and it makes it a spinner that goes around and around and around. And then my ballpoint pen, I'm going to put in the middle. So I like to put the pen in this closed part right here and then save the heavy part for the spinner part. But you can use it how you want to because this is going to be your game. I'm going to get my cards. Now, here's the fun part. I'm going to put my pen in the middle. I'm going to give my spinner a spin. Let's see where it's at. It stopped on the letter U. I'm going to write the letter U on my card and set it aside for later. Then I'm going to spin again. I sure hope I get that letter O. That letter O is fun for me to write. I'm going to go the other way this time. I think I'll try a different hand. <gasps> hey, I got the letter A. There's an A in my Katie name. I'm going to practice writing my letters. I'm going to do one more, and then I want to show you how to make a different game. Okay, let's hope I get a O. I got another A. That's funny. Now I'm going to have two that are the same. I'll practice writing my A. And that was sure fun playing vowels with you. Now I'm going to show you a different game. That was super fun making a game with you with our vowels. So now I want you to make a different game with me. So you'll need a paper plate and your Sharpie, maybe some other markers if you have it. And you'll need a cup. I have things inside my cup and I'll show you what they are in a minute. The card beside me says, I can read common, grade appropriate, high frequency words by sight. Teachers, we call those sight words, and you can call them that if you want to. Sight words are super hard because sometimes you can't sound them out, and other times you can, and it's a little bit crazy. But I want to show you a fun way that you can learn your sight words. Maybe by now you've been talking with your teacher, maybe on a Chromebook, maybe on your phone, or maybe you see your teacher from far, far away and you can say, hi, tell me what word to practice. So make sure you check with your teacher what sight words you should be working on. So I'm going to take my Sharpie one more time. I'm going to draw a line down the middle of my plate like I did last time. Kind of makes a funny sound. And then I'm going to go across because I really want that middle part. Now, I think I'm going to leave this just like that. I'm going to put the word I, and I know that I is always capital. 
So I'm going to write the word I. That's another word that you cannot write backward. That is really fun. I'm going to write the word my, because my, oh my, am I having fun with you. M-Y is the word that spells my. M-Y is the word that spells my. M-Y spells my. M-Y spells my. M-Y is the word that spells my. Mm. I think I'm going to use the word she. She is a fun word. S-H-E, S-H-E, S-H-E spells she. S-H-E, S-H-E, S-H-E spells she. Oh my gosh, I just discovered something. If I cover up the letter S in the word she, there's a word hiding in there. The word he is hiding in the word she. In my next space, I'm going to write the word he. H-E is the word that spells he. H-E is the word that spells he. H-E spells he. H-E spells he. H-E is the word that spells he. So in my cup that's right by me, remember my pool noodle that I wrote letters on and I cut apart? I have the pieces of my pool noodle. Oh, I have the letter E. Two of the words on my plate have the letter E. Let's see what the next letter is. I have a H. That's the word I just wrote. H-E. So there's a couple things you can do. You can spin your spinner. If you still have your safety pin, you can use that. There's other things you can try too. So I'll put my safety pin in the middle. I want to be really careful. Then you can spin your spinner. Oh, I landed on the word she. Now I know the word she has the letter H. So what I can do is I can stack the letter H right there because I know it's in there. Now, maybe I'll get the letter she again. I better get it out of the way. Oh, I did get the letter she. There's the E that's in the word she. There's a couple things you can do, my friends. You can match the letters to the words on here. Here's something else you can do because I like to practice writing my sight words because they're so hard for me. I'm going to spin that spinner. Oh, yeah, I got the word he this time. So I'll take my card. My favorite color is blue, so I'm going to use this color blue to write the word he. H and then an E. I'm going to spin one more time. See if I get the word that's the same or not the same. Oh, I got the word my. He, my. That's a fun word to say. My, oh my. My. My game is fun. I hope you have fun making a game out of a paper plate, some cards, make a spinner, match your letters. Hope you have fun doing that. Thanks for tuning in to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Medford School District is a place where all are learning and learning is for all. Welcome, bienvenidos to uh, Washington Elementary in beautiful Medford, Oregon. My name is Gloria Pereira Robertson. Come inside. Everyone's welcome in my school. So, are you ready to hear about all the hats I wear in public education? First, I'm the proud daughter of Mexican immigrants. I'm also a first generation Ameri Mexican American. I'm also the 2017 Oregon State Teacher of the Year. I'm also an NEA Teaching Excellence recipient. I am here today to talk about something that is very dear to my heart because as an English language learner and a bilingual kindergarten teacher, let me tell you, I understand the struggles, the anxiety, the isolation, the harassment that English language learners suffer everywhere across the country. Being able to communicate in English gives English language learners a voice, a voice to communicate their basic needs, a voice to develop and build relationships, a voice to ask questions in order to build comprehension skills, a voice to be able to achieve in this country. How do we engage and empower English language learners in our schools in order to overcome the obstacles 
of the language barrier. This year, I created a partnership with Google, and I have started a pilot program in Glen Falls, New York, to use Google Translate in the classroom as a tool to empower English language learners to find their voice. This pilot will give access to English language learners to curriculum and building relationships with students that they never had a chance to do before. My idea will allow these students to communicate and work with English-only students and their teachers, something that wasn't really happening before using this tool. This concept will help make learning more inclusive and equitable for all RELL students. With your help, we will boldly go where no one has gone before. You will see how using Google Translate can change the mindset of all students and educational staff by bringing empathy and understanding to what our English language learners have been dealing with for so many years. So please, help them find their voice. Help them find the tools that they need in order to communicate so they too can be found in translation. If you can complete a project start to finish on your own, the feeling of getting it done is just amazing. I'm excited to go out today and meet a local business. I feel like I might be able to really connect with him because I will have a basic idea of what he's talking about and possibly gain a mentorship out of it. Pathways consist of these broad categories, academic, career and technical education, pre-professional, and visual and performing arts. Traditional K-12 systems you could call one-size-fits-all model, where the real legitimate end is a four-year college degree after high school. The truth is that model's inadequate to meet the needs of education and workforce in the 21st century. A four-year college degree is tremendous, but it isn't the answer for everyone. What is the answer ultimately is, what is my unique set of interests and abilities, and how can the educational system prepare me to use those in the world of work? Our goal then isn't to try to conform students to the same model. Our challenge and our interest in the Pathways Initiative is to engage those diverse interests and match them with high demand, high skilled, career options. I love the Pathways program. I didn't have it when I was in high school and I wish I had. I took a long path to find where I wanted to go. If we can shorten that for students, that's going to be great. Pathways programs really provide more experiences for students. They have something that they can look forward to that's right up their alley, that interests them, that they can see that connection to real life and really keeps them connected to graduate. I like being able to explore things that I like to do at school. It makes school more fun in general because I love going to those classes. Gaining that experience now during high school can help me afterwards because when I graduate, I can always count on having that as a career choice. They can get some hands-on experience. They can really start to delineate where their interests lie. If they thought, oh, I think I'm interested in culinary, and they take culinary and they really are, getting them to those visits to those colleges before they're out of high school, or if they think they're interested in early education, connecting them with local elementary schools to do some practicum and internship to really see is this my fit. I've been interested in child education pretty much my whole life. I've always wanted to become a teacher. It's nice to be able to see the kids every day, kind of like the highlight of my day. Really exciting to be able to have that interaction. It definitely makes me want to come to school more. Pathways program is great for students. It really prepares us for our future with being able to have these hands-on experiences. The Pathways program, I think, is really beneficial. We're very fortunate that South Medford is providing these opportunities to learn about the different trades. I like the kinesthetic part of it. Being able to build something on your own is really cool to me. Look forward to going to those classes a lot. I've got friends in the field that are saying, as soon as they turn 18, I want to hire them. Whether they're still in school or not, I'll hire them after school because there's so much need for employees. There's opportunity to go out and start businesses right away. I have a nephew who started a landscape business right out of high school, and he's doing better than a lot of his peers. Not all the businesses out there require a degree. In fact, I would say less than half. The idea behind a credential diploma within Pathways is that students can earn community college or other college credit while in high school, which benefits the student, economically benefits them in terms of their toe in the water in post high school education. In addition, a student could earn an industry recognized credential. An example in manufacturing is a certified production technician. If a student in high school earns their certified production technician credential, they have several steps ahead in earning a high wage, high demand job. They're advantaged in that job search because of the skill that they're able to show they have. And we want to provide our students an opportunity to earn that industry credential because it allows them to get a, a foot forward 
in terms of employment. It distinguishes them in the race to get a job. Wherever the student decides that they would best apply their unique gifts and abilities, we want to create that opening into the world of work.